going to give it our normal five minute countdown so we can get our friends and family inside of the stream. Oh, we got so much stuff going on right now. We've got Kill Team, we've got Silver Bayonet, we've got Frostgrave, we've got Marvel Crisis Protocol, we've got Warcry, we've got so, so much going on. I'm also hung up on the Street Fighter Duel. If you haven't seen it, it's a new mobile game out. <laughs> and it got me. They done got me. But today, we will be streaming some really cool terrain that I'll be assembling for all of these war games I'm playing. We will be activating my Twitch and saying, hey, open. Yay! Build in lots of terrain. I also need to build some terrain for... Building some terrain for my RPG that I'm running. So here we go. Oh, great googly moogly. One second, my wife is laid up. And we're back. Oops, sorry about that. We'll be starting this stream off here real soon. Don't worry. Sorry if it's a little loud. That's what I'm here for. Just happy to be alive. This is a triumph. Right. Up a loop. There we go. Share the stream. And we're shared. All right. Okay. If this is actually possible. I'm very excited also because I have been saving terrain for like a year now, like bits and bobs of stuff that I work with, and I'm finally going to use it tonight on the stream, so this will be like months worth of, oh, Months and months and months worth of of stuff that I've been saving. I'm sure Sabrina is going to be excited for me to get it out out from the garage and out of Let me see if this actually works. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't think it's going to dry fast enough. I have to use super glue. And I do need more super glue. All right. As they say in high school, at least in my high school, they did. Let's get ready to roll. We're gonna see if that hangs tough. All right, I just assembled the box real quick. Off air. That literally took me two minutes, and here we go. Hey, everybody! Thank you for joining me on the Big Bad Nerd Dad stream. I am very excited to talk about all the cool war games that I've been engaging with. Engaging in, not with in. Jim Roller, hey, what's going on, homie? Thanks for watching. Hi. I'll be talking about all the cool tabletop war games, role playing games, board games that I've been getting into over the past few weeks and that have legitimately ingrained themselves into my brain. Like, I'm, I'm, even when I'm at work, I'm focusing on my work. But I'm also, I've got all these different games rolling around in my brain, and I'm very excited about them. Kill Team, War Cry, Frostgrave, Stargrave, Silver Bayonet. Silver Bayonet, I have been putting my brain to the grindstone, trying to build the best, most fun uh, army unit possible. And I can't wait to talk about that a little bit here on the, the stream. While y'all get to watch me assemble some terrain. Uh, and this is really cool because this is going to actually kick off. While I'm doing this, I'm going to kick off what I want to call my discount terrain challenge. Um, something that I really, really like is budget terrain. Black Magic Craft has a YouTube channel. Uh, or they are. It is a YouTube channel uh, from a guy in Canada. And he used to do these really cool challenges where he would take things from a dollar store and turn it into tabletop terrain. So he would take like $1 water guns or he would take uh, foam core and other random things from the dollar store and turn it into legitimate terrain uh, that he would use in his RPGs and his war games. And I really liked all the stuff that he did. Like I, I've, I've actually made quite a few of the, the examples that he put out for different columns and dungeon tiles. Uh, I've, I've even made a few little houses out of foam core. Uh, and I, I wanted to do that again, uh, but I wanted it to be in the form of a challenge because the truth is I'm here to help others get into gaming and get into all kinds of other stuff like um, being able to paint miniatures, being able to Start your own Dungeons and Dragons group, your own RPG group. Uh, all of this stuff that I do is not difficult, and I do it in my free time. And I'm I'm here to help promote the hobby, to help bring others to a point where they can say, "I can do that." Uh, if, if the Big Bad Nerd Dad can do it, I can do it, and you absolutely can. I'm I've just had I just have years of experience in doing it, and I want to share those years of experience with you so that you can. Have fun doing it as well. Hey, Tim Clark, Tim, thanks for watching. I see you. I see you lurking there on Facebook. Uh, so for today's bits and bobs, I'm going to be using uh, these pieces of pieces of hardboard. That hard H R D board. 
they're legitimate pieces of trash. Um, when my where I work, we have these giant spools of nylon uh, banding. This used to band different things together. I don't know how what else I'd put it, but uh, and the nylon has these pieces of hardboard that are legitimately the perfect size for linear obstacles. So linear obstacles are going to be anything uh, that can create like a wall or an interference on the playing field. So it could be a a wall of boxes or a wall of barrels or a wall of um, trash, just junk, something that's piling up. It could be a fence, a, like a, a nice little fence that gets in the way uh, that makes miniatures or um, opponents have to change their line of sight to, to change their movement pattern so that it, it gives them something blocking so it's not just a straight shot. Uh, my favorite war game currently is Frostgrave, and you have to have a ton of linear objects and big pieces of terrain to block line of sight because a majority of the spells and, and attacks in the game can go two, three feet across the board. And it's only it's played on a 36 by 36, 36 inch by 36 inch playing field. So you have to be very careful when you're when you leave too many open lanes of long, unobstructed vision. Because then people can be hitting each other from across the board. You know, one or two big lines or having a place where you can get up in elevation and have a clear sight down is a good idea. But at ground level, you know, if, you're, if you're playing one or two story games, you know, one or two level games, you want to have linear objects to block that kind of stuff. So today, go ahead and switch the view. I showed you, I showed you the hardboard. Along with the hardboard, we'll be using more trash. So... I work with uh, a Neutronic system as basically a, I test chemicals and when I test the chemicals it'll do a little printout. So if it's printing out paper, that paper is on a little roll. I just keep those little rolls. You can see how small it is in comparison to my hand. Right, it's small. I, mean, I got, got some thick fingers but we'll be using this. I want to make sure that the chat's refreshed. Uh, we'll be using this. These really cool little... Now this is not trash. These are things that... I have a laser cutter. Uh, and so I have these laser cut files to cut little crates. And uh, I used to sell these. Um, I'm going to get back into laser cutting here sometime within the next few months. I'm tr still trying to clean out the garage so that I have room to work in there. Uh, but I'm going to get back to making these little crate cards. And a one crate card will create two crates. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So we're going to be using some of these crate cards to build some crates and put them out onto a le uh, into linear objects. Beep, boop. Along with this big, nice, thick stack. Chris Lowell, if you're watching. Adam Ford, if you're watching. Those are some of my coworkers that they know that I, I want these pieces. And so they when they change out a big spool of that nylon, they'll save them for me. I have great coworkers. I absolutely love my coworkers. They're great people. They think about each other. Uh, they think about me when they see, oh, Mike, do you want this tube? This tube would look really cool for terrain, huh? I'll be like, you know what? Let me get that tube. Give me that tube. My my garage is filled with cardboard tubes <laughs> that I've had these pipe dreams of making all different types of terrain with. And today, we're going to do it. I'm going to show you. Um, so if you're watching uh, James Chumley, James, uh, I'll actually be using some of the hardboard and tubes that we've been saving over the past year. Uh, that we've been working together. So, we're going to switch the camera angle. <gasps> Alright, so, as you can see, I have my little pieces of hardboard. I have a big old box. I actually have several boxes of these. <laughs> of these cardboard tubes. So, I'll be using lots of these cardboard tubes. Um, 
And then just plain and simple Elmer's glue. Perfect. Works, works wonders. I'm just going to slather glue all over the place because the, the hardboard is going to absorb a lot of it. And so, I love this kind of stuff. All, all of this terrain that I'm making is free. I mean, I, I pick it up from where I work, but you can, do, you can do the exact same thing with stuff from where you work or you know, things that you use around the house. Uh, for my terrain challenge that I'll be doing in the next few weeks, um, I will be using cereal boxes. I'll be using foam plates. I'm going to go, I'm very fortunate that my wife gives me a little bit of a gamer budget from time to time. So I'm going to use some of my gamer budget. Uh, and I'm only going to spend $20. That's, that's the caveat. That's the thing with these terrain, my budget terrain. Oh, look at that. Stays put. Kind of slides a little bit, but once it dries, it'll be good. Uh, my budget terrain... challenges will be that I only want to spend 20 bucks and with that 20 bucks I want to create something that you want to see on the field you know uh, maybe you want to see a little ramshackle house or some uh, something that James one of my co-workers had asked, said that he wants to see uh, some ancient runes ruins ruins he wants to see some ancient ruins oh, I can do that on the on the stream right Get sloppy with it. Got plenty of glue. And so I will only spend $20 so that y'all can see that it's absolutely possible to have a table full of terrain uh, and you don't have to spend a lot of money because a lot of the games that I play... Oh no, who is this? Somebody on some weird compassionate from... Get out of here. I don't have mods, so if anybody wants to volunteer to be a mod for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Oh no. Look at that. Oh great. All right, well, somebody just hijacked my Twitch. feed, <laughs> and I can't kick them off. So if anybody wants to volunteer to be a moderator for me, that'd be fantastic. I could use the help. But as you can see, it's very easy, very simple. Uh, a lot of the games that I like to play are model agnostic, so you don't have to have particular models to play them. Silver Bayonet, Stargrave, Frostgrave, you can use any models you want as long as you know what they represent uh, and that your opponent can tell what they represent, right? It's not like um, Kill Team, Warhammer 40k, Kill Team, um, Warcry, where what you see is what you get. The models just have to be a representation of what's on the field. You could use uh, paper cutouts. I've seen people use paper cutouts to represent their models. I've seen people use acrylic tokens, just little flat round circle tokens. To represent what they have. Do it on stream, Ramirez. Look. A squiggly out a bunch of this. Squiggly up, up, a doob up. All right, there we go. So look how, look how easy and simple 
this is and again i am legitimately using leftovers from my work these are just paper rolls from what i use on a day-to-day -day basis if you take a little model you can see how they can run around hide behind it's just tall enough i'll probably make it one more level high for taller models to hide behind so that it, it breaks line of sight it makes it so that, so that it's harder to see and uh hey sabrina thanks for watching My, my beautiful wife, the big bad nerd mom. Yep. But. Bloop, 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 bloop. Again, this is just super simple. Very easy, very simple. Thank you for sharing the stream, Sabrina. I greatly appreciate it. Every share, every like helps to get me to whatever it is that Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube want to get me to, to where I can get some money from this. <laughs> Affiliation status. But these are just fantastic little linear objects. To block line of sight, I'll repaint these. Uh, I'll prime them black and then dry brush them with a, a gray. And then dry brush over that, like a dark gray, and then dry brush over that with a metallic color. A blue. One more. Boom. And so that took us just a few minutes. And now we have a nice linear obstacle that was completely free. Well, with the exception of the glue, right? I had to buy the glue from the dollar store. You can. He can run around it. He can jump up it. He can hide behind it. Like, you can't see him. You don't know he's there. I guess you could look through the tubies and see him, but... Theo Choco, thanks for watching, Theo Choco. Theo Choco is from Latin, Latin America. So, just south of us, here in Houston, Texas. And Very excited to have people from far away. So I actually have several of these already pre-built that I will be painting and getting ready uh, as barricades and other miscellaneous things. Uh, next, this is what I've been waiting for. I've been wanting to do this for years. Uh, so I'll have those little cards that I was showing you. The little cards make these little crates if you look they're almost the perfect height for models just two stack too high you'll be good to go uh, i have dozens and dozens of these little guys built i even have some little barrels i messed around with for a bit so i'm going to take a few of these out have some pallets I'll decorate it with. I need to make some more of those pallets. Get some of these square boxes. All right. 
I just want to have these. Just have those there. As a nice loose little barricade. You know, maybe put maybe put the pallet leaning up against something. So it looks kinda cool. Right. Nice and cohesive. Another box here. And so you see that. I glue it all together on this nice little board. And then voila. Top layer. Start gluing it around. Just dump a bunch of glue. So these crates obviously are not free. I cut them with my laser cl cutter. The plan is to make more of them here pretty soon. Uh, get our Etsy shop back up and running. Sell some more dice towers, sell some of these really cool little Boxes. I'm just going to drop some glue on there. Flip. Drop some glue on there. And this hardboard that I'm working with is really neat because uh, it's got one smooth side and one rough side. The smooth side has like this protective sheen to it. So it, it won't snag when you put it down on a table, like if there's felt on the table. All right, so I want to leave, I want to leave a few spaces where models can like jump up on it. Like one side is impenetrable, just a flat surface, so they'd have to make a an all-out jump to get up there. And maybe I just want them to take partial cover behind it, so they can see over it and then take a little bit of cover. So here we have two different examples of linear terrain we got these giant big body look at that it's already pretty much glued there's just hiding behind it around it maybe you maybe the guy pops out for a little bit to fire off a few magic spells and then we have these giant boxes where they can maybe you are trying to infiltrate 
a barricade that a that the the city guard has put up to stop you and your and your uh your group from entering the city because they know that you're there to save the princess from two kingdoms over so they they put up a barricade and they're hiding behind it or they're taking partial cover behind it giving them a defensive bonus oh no here they come While you and your group are trying your best to make your way through. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's like four, five. Five of these cards worth of crates. I want to make a few more of them. Because I have plenty. But things like uh, Frostgrave. Frostgrave, you want a lot of this stuff in the way to intersect line of sight to, to stop your opponents from having a straight line to get off the field. Our sponsor down there in the bottom corner of the feed, Space Cadets Gaming Gaming, has been wanting to do like a uh, a skirmish day, playing skirmish war games. Uh, so I think I'm going to try and get my boys, the, the nerd bros together, to start playing Frostgrave out there on either Sunday, Sunday afternoons or Friday nights. Whenever, whatever me and my wife can come to an agreement, or maybe once or twice a month. As being a part of being the big bad nerd dad is making sure that mama and papa have time to go out and do things and the babies are watched. Bloop. Again. A little bit of glue. And because I'm doing porous wood to cardboard, basically, I don't need to sand it to open up the, the grain like you would on normal wood. When you try and glue things together. Right. Oop. Gonna go here. And we'll just continue to glue a few things around. Because we're not worried about it being too aesthetically pleasing. The truth is, is any terrain on the table is better than no terrain at all. It adds. Oops. It adds to the effect. Rain challenge. So, if there's anything that you'd like to see, if you'd like to see some uh, magical forests, maybe a, a witch's hut, um, kind of think, what else is there? Broccoli, my wife says. 
uh, just anything different out of the ordinary that you would like to see made with uh, Dollar Tree items. Right, things that I can pick up from the dollar store. Maybe you're not sure what's at the dollar store. Let me tell you something. The Dollar Tree has really stepped its game up. There's, <laughs> they've got lots of really cool little things out there. So in, in about five minutes, I've created these two barriers. That little baddies could hide behind. Draw fire on top. And, and it looks just like a normal barricade. Like I might come back through and put some some random like weapons, siege weapons in different places. Maybe drop some swords, bows and arrows like that have fallen from uh, that have been dropped by fallen warriors. But this kind of thing helps with again blocking line of sight, bringing a bit of dynamics to the table so that there's not just running straight across the field. Uh, and then it makes your players think. If you're a dungeon master, you don't want them to just run like just, you don't just want them to have a, a huge open field to fight in. Uh, it sounds like a lot of fun, uh, and it's good for the first few encounters, uh, or the first really just the first encounter, so that they don't have to worry about any of that hiding and things like that. But you want to have things for them to hide behind, to use for cover, to sort of strategize, and then as a as a storyteller, as a dungeon master. You want to make sure that you make the scenario challenging for them. So you have your bad guys taking cover behind um, the barricades, using the barricades effectively. Maybe, maybe one of the barricades is nothing but barrels, and, and the, your, the players don't realize that some of the barrels could potentially be filled with gunpowder. Why would uh, somebody make a barricade with barrels of gunpowder i have no idea but it could happen it can make the game a lot of fun give your players something really cool to think about as they're building and doing that kind of stuff um so two weeks ago i got to play silver bayonet with a uh, brother brett he's he's been very excited to get somebody to play that game with him uh, and i can see why it's a very fun game i i have never been a history buff I have never wanted to learn about the Napoleonic Wars. Um, I understand that history is important, but it's just not something that I saw myself wanting to know more of. Uh, and I was pleasantly shocked, shocked, when I got to play, I got, the, he gave me the core rulebook, um, he bought me a core rulebook, he didn't just give me one, he bought me a core rulebook and said, hey, learn how to play this game, I want to play it. Ooh, my friends want to play a game, and they're willing to get me the stuff to play it, I will absolutely try it. That's how I got into Marvel Crisis Protocol. Thanks, Joe. Uh, I'm going to build another one of these 2B barricades, because I feel like they're very industrial, and I'm trying to make an industrial table here. Alright. Uh, but, you know, playing Silver Bayonet... I had a lot of fun, and it's it's set in the during the Napoleonic Wars, so it's very old school. Um, little huts for houses. There's no cool big mega structures. There's just houses, and maybe you fight in the countryside uh, around the ruins of an old burnt down windmill or. Uh, a granary, something to that extent. Uh, and so I need to, I, I need terrain for that. I don't have very much. I have a lot of fantasy terrain, so that's 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 not too bad. But I need like uh, a nice little hamlet, or I'll, I'll maybe a cool swamp where there's a, a swamp hobgoblin that's hiding out, and we need to go in and investigate it. I think that's one of the coolest things about um, Silver Bayonet is that your your group is, are is basically ex-military that have learned about the supernatural 
things that are happening in the world. And so they're going out and studying, finding, finding out about these supernatural things. And the very first scenario in the Silver Bayonet uh, rulebook. Hey, all right. Uh, James, James Chumley from Facebook. Hey, James. Uh, has just asked that he saw my Facebook post uh, and he wants me to build a few ruined fantasy buildings. So I can definitely look, I can definitely look at the building a few ruined fantasy buildings with some dollar store items, foam core and uh, whatever else I can find. I'll do a little uh, in the bag stream in a few weeks, uh, but I will definitely do that for you. And uh, I'll tell you what, James, once I've built it, I will send it to you so that you can have a piece of terrain yourself to start your own wargaming RPG slash tabletop collection. But I can definitely do some ruined fantasy buildings. But again, uh, I got this idea from. Thank you, no problem, James. Thank you very much for watching the stream. Thank you for watching the stream and supporting me, liking the stream, sharing the stream. All of that helps. Uh, and in fact, in the next few months, in May, for Labor Day, Memorial Day, Memorial Day, in May for Memorial Day, we will be doing a 24-hour stream benefiting the Wounded Warrior Project, where we will only be playing games that have, uh, that were originally rooted in video games. So we're going to be playing the uh, Stardew Valley board game. We're going to be playing the Mega Man board game, Resident Evil board game. Uh, I am going to be making my own conversion of Kingdom Hearts into the Tiny D6 uh, rule set. So me and my big bad nerd fam will be playing Kingdom Hearts. And then I am collaborating with a Instagram artist who has been wanting to put together a Legend of Zelda tabletop RPG. So we will be playing a Legend of Zelda tabletop RPG that we have built from the ground up. And by built from the ground up, I mean the setting itself. Like we'll be taking from the Zelda lore, but we'll be using the tiny D6 engine with a lot of tweaking. We'll be tweaking it for specifically traits and uh, special items and things like that to, to really give it that flavor of a Legend of Zelda tabletop RPG. Keep up. Very excited about that. We've actually been working on it the past two weeks now. Uh, we've been talking about it for, I feel like years. <laughs> Yeah, very excited, very excited about the uh, Memorial Day 24-hour charity stream. And that the charity we'll be benefiting, again, is the Wounded Warrior Project. Very excited about that. Um, our veterans need help, and we can help them. Bop a weep. Again, all I'm doing is gluing these. I'm going to prime them black. Do a dry brush of gray. Uh, actually, with these box barricades, I'm not going to prime them. I'm going to leave them raw like that. And then just maybe add a little static grass and rocks to the base in different areas. 
Because these are good just as they are. Right. Again, just have have the minis use the barricades for cover. So in less than 30 minutes, I have assembled four barricades or four pieces of linear terrain. Uh, two of which don't have to be painted or prepped or done anything to. You can just plop those down right on the right on the table and then use them just as is as barricades as linear as linear obstacles. Um, you could even like I gave a little bit of room on the other side of each one so that the the baddies can use them as a platform to stand on and gain cover. But you could just build it solid to make a big thick barricade for your opponents to have to run around or for um, if you're the dungeon master making your players find a way to get through the barricade around the barricade um, make it a bottleneck so that it makes it harder for them to, to break through maybe set set these on fire get some cotton balls um, glue the cotton balls to different parts of it stretch out the cotton balls a little bit and then paint the tips of the cotton ball red in the center and then gray towards the end so it looks like they're on fire uh so hey you know those barricades are on fire there's no getting through them you need to get around them and of course very smart players will find a way to go through them around them over them under them teleport past them uh that's that's one of the key parts of being a good storyteller slash dungeon master is making sure that you know that no matter what you do there's going to be some sort of loophole for your players to figure out to get around no matter what contingency plans you have uh, your players are always going to be uh, willing to go that extra mile to think of something crazy to make you pull your hair out that's why I, that's why I wear a hat I have no hair because my players have taken it all Oh, that was also my wife and kids. But uh, I think I'm going to make one more barricade of boxes. And definitely, let's see, I'm using those hard boards. All this little terrain. And it doesn't have to be these neat little crates, right? You could go to the dollar store and they sell little wooden blocks. You can use the little wooden blocks, spray paint them brown, and then boom, they're boxes. You know, paint the edges black or something to give them a little bit of structure. Boom. I'm, I'm like 98% sure that I have a ton more of these boxes. So once I start doing the terrain giveaways, once I give away the piece of terrain that I've built, I'll include some of these little boxes of, uh, let's see these little boxes, these little cards of crates. I have crates, I have wagons, I have uh, a fountain, I have a little tavern, I have a different little scatter terrain to be put onto the board uh, and I'll, I'll send that out so that you can have a nice little starter set of terrain to go with everything uh, i'll be making a post tomorrow on the big bad nerd facebook page about what i'm trying to do with the terrain challenge so if you will please post uh share the post Comment on the post of what kind of terrain you would like to see. I would gla greatly appreciate it. Make sure that's high enough.
That's good. One more. Oop. And then Put one more. They look the same. All right. Bam. And there you go. One last one. These will riddle my. Frostgrave and Stargrave and Silver Bayonet Battlefields. I'll probably even use them for uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol as just sort of what is size size two terrain or size one destructible terrain. Easy peasy, let me squeezy. Alright. Well, I got different size tubes too, I could have used. See? Got a bunch of tubes around here. All right. So we've made all of this terrain. In less than an hour. Oh, boop. You can't even see that. Blah. with simple things that you can find around the house. Uh, always, keep your, always keep your eye out for random things that you see at your job. Like I saw those little tubes and I knew I could use them for something. Uh, the hardboard, just basically pieces of thick cardboard. You could do the exact same thing with cardboard, cut it into pieces. Um, the dollar store has a plethora of stuff uh, specifically it looks like a refinery James says uh, the dollar store dollar tree dollar uh, dollar tree specifically that's what I meant if you're in, if you're in the United States it's dollar tree if you're in Canada I believe it's called dollarama um, family dollar they all have this new hobby section, crafting section, and it's filled with everything that you need to do this kind of stuff. Um, they have wood knife sets that are basically good cutting exacto knives. This is from Dollar Tree. It was $1.25 and it came with a bunch of these extra blades. 
And really, this blade will take, one blade will take you a very long time to use. Um, they have wire and paints, uh, exact, the exact kind of paints that you need to paint terrain. Because you don't want to use your really nice um, miniature paints, right? To paint terrain, you can le legitimately just use the grodiest, cheapest paint to paint your terrain. You don't need to use really nice paint to paint your terrain uh, and waste your, your money on good paint. I highly recommend just getting a little black tube, a little tube of black paint, a little tube of white paint, and then go from there. You can do make a gray, use black as the primer, dry brush gray. Uh, if you want to dry brush different colors, get the colors that you need, brown, green. Um, if you want to try and do off-source lighting, orange and red, uh, uh, mix with the white, the different shades will get you exactly what you need. Nice. Um, quick, easy, simple, fun, cheap. That's going to be what we'll be working on for the next few weeks is um, bargain terrain, cheap side terrain that you can build yourself, things that'll help you fill up your table. Like this, this, was, this is going to block a lot of lines of sight. I have other 3D printed buildings and, and things like that that I'm going to put on my, my table. But this will help fill the spaces where those buildings aren't big enough to reach. Uh, and on the stream, I'll be building those. I'll be building some buildings so that you too can learn how to make ruined. What did he want? Ruined fantasy buildings. I'll be doing non-ruined fantasy buildings. I'll do um, a little sci-fi tech hut because uh, I am playing. I am running a game of. Um, it's basically My Hero Academia, so it's a modern setting with superhero kids, superpowered kids. Uh, so I need to make some terrain for that because I have I have a few modern pieces of terrain for Marvel Crisis Protocol, like a little coffee shop. I have an arcade. I don't think what else I have? I have a war game store. I got a, a comic book store. Uh, but I need other pieces of modern terrain. Like I'll be making some little arcade cabinets, uh, some little newspaper those little newspaper boxes where there's old school where you used to put a quarter so many quarters in and you can open it up and pull a newspaper out um, but I'll be doing all that with stuff that I get from the dollar tree and family dollar uh, with a $20 budget let the double check with my wife yeah $20 budget uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun because these are all things that you'll be able to do at home um, with the exception of maybe paint being a little bit extra. Uh, I'll show you how to build everything and then I'll show you how to decorate paint, make it look good, uh, how to create your own washes uh, so that you can wash everything that you do to give it like a grimier, realistic effect. Um, I learned a really cool trick using this clear glue for water effects. Uh, so we'll be using that for water effects to make things look, you know, create a little pond, create a, we'll create a little sewer uh, diorama for my fishman that I'll be using for Frostgrave. I've been wanting to do that for years. Um, and I'm very excited to show y'all all the really cool stuff that we have planned over the next few months, weeks, months, uh, leading up into our Memorial Day 24-hour stream, our Labor Day 24-hour stream, our Black Friday 24-hour stream, all of which will be benefiting a different charity, uh, starting with the Wounded Warrior Project, uh, the last weekend of May. Uh, so thank y'all very much for watching. I'm very thankful that you stopped by and watched me glue terrain together and talk about all the different games that I love. Uh, and if you have any questions, if you have anything that you want to see on the stream, please let me know. Uh, give me a little message here on the stream. Give me a little message on my, at my Facebook is the best way to contact me. Uh, interact with my posts so that I can 
get pushed up a little bit more in the Facebook algorithm. Um, and I will see y'all very soon. Thank you very much for watching. I love you.